Hey guys, before this video begins, I want to give a big announcement. Um, I hit 1,000 subscribers uh, last week, and I wanted to do a giveaway for all of you because you brought me to this point, and if we can just get my watch hours up, I'll finally be able to be monetized, and I'll be able to pay for college. So, in response to this amazing news, I am doing a 1,000 subs giveaway. And the rules are simple. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, follow my Instagram, and DM me on Instagram with, with the words Dexterly1000 subs. And I will respond to you and your name, your account name on Instagram will be entered into a raffle. And then everything will be randomized and I will make sure to have those results either put in through my Instagram or most likely in a YouTube community and or video upload, so stay tuned for that. Minecraft YouTubers. If you've been on the internet for the at least past 10 years, you should be familiar with Minecraft Let's Plays, mod showcases, challenges, and role plays. You would also know that while there are plenty of gems amongst the rubble, such as our King, Stampy Cat, Ross, and DanTDM, there are plenty of rotten apples in this mix. Most notably, within recent years, we've seen Lion Maker, Elf Lee, Jinbop, and Sky is Minecraft all fall into this mix. I didn't do extensive research on either of these YouTubers, so this video will be over a completely different kind of YouTuber. This is Afmo, or Jess, Jessica. What started as a channel to share gameplay of different popular games within the time became a Minecraft channel with the sole purpose of storytelling, originally through the means of mods and singular player of Afmo. I was not there from the beginning, however, I only discovered Afmo by the time My Street had first release, and the latest video was episode 20 of My Street titled The Kiss. At this point, we had multiple seasons and variations of Minecraft Diaries, quite a bit different of my street content and multiplayer games consisting of mostly prop hunt and variations of that along with hide and seek at this point afma was the perfect pre-teen early teen channel for minecraft lovers who enjoyed story and visuals over pp and mod showcases i say pre-teen and teen because afma used to have very mature themes in her content prior to how her channel is today she had multiple story plots and characters centered around violent deaths, irresponsible alcohol use, seductive characters like Lucinda, and romance that would mostly go into the world of softcore if you weren't careful or aware. Now these things may not seem bad to everyone, but it certainly is not appropriate for little Timmy to watch videos like this unsupervised, especially since outside of her roleplay videos, she collaborated with other popular Minecraft YouTubers at the time, like Ross Houseowner, Jinbop, That Guy Barney, and Sky Does Minecraft, along with a few others. All of which used extensive foul language and was subject to change within about three or so years later. Along with plenty of innuendos and generally more mature content you would only experience in something from Adult Swim or the Golden Age of Markiplier. Which he does come into this topic, so stay tuned for that. Now all seemed fine and dandy for Afma and friends for a long time. Her audience was young, more so ranging from 9 to 14, and she catered to that age range with the way she wrote characters and plot lines, along with references to different animes, cartoons, books, popular media tropes, fanfics, reading, and writing, and recreating within minigame videos, and even YouTubers. I'd like to touch on a particular video I remember watching, and when researching for this video, I could not find the original or anything about the topic, but if you remember, and if you don't, that I'm about to explain. There was a period where the internet loved YouTuber crossovers, and it just so happened that there were two extremely popular gaming channels that crossed over quite a bit in the height of Aphmau's roleplay videos. These YouTubers were Markiplier and Jacksepticeye, and for my sake, I'm just going to call them Mark and Sean when referring to them. Aphmau released a video in Season 2 of My Street where she finally donned the memorable and quite catchy song Faster Car by Love and Caliber within the intros of these roleplays. Alongside these story-driven videos were a multitude of mini-games like Hide and Seek, Prop Hunt, Never Have I Ever, and so on. However, every so often there would be a special video to release from Aphmau's clutches, and those were fan fiction readings. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but this particular video from my memory featured a Septiplier fan fiction. And if that's incorrect, then I can at least say with full confidence that the quote, Take a look at my room, were the last words uttered from Jessica's lips before she revealed a Minecraft set full of imported, stolen Septiplier fan art. One thing I would like to mention, Septiplier is disgusting. These are two very real human beings who are 
and have been for years now in committed relationships with women, might I add. So the ship itself was uncomfortably popular back in the day. You couldn't open any sort of app or social media without seeing it. But Mark and Sean themselves had expressed their discomfort and distaste towards the practice of encouraging the ship, not just because it was themselves with each other, but because they were they are real people, and again, real people in relationships with other real people. Now, the other characters Afma created, which were based on NPC mods you can still download to this day, showed their discomfort towards this room Afma made, not because the real reasons, but because they just found shipping in Afma in general to be somewhat cringe. And this, my loyal viewers, is where the fetishizing and queer baiting begins. Actually, it started with season 1, episode 20 of My Street, where Gareth and Lawrence both try to get rid of Aaron, the primary love interest of Afma. So they could take his place as Romeo in Caitlyn's play in order to steal a kiss from Aphmau, who was casted against her will as Juliet. This is an instance where I can't decide if this is fetishizing or cute trope romance plots. I always found the whole forced into romantic roles despite there being a crush but clear nervousness between characters to be kind of strange, but if done right, it could be pretty cute. But back to the main topic. Lawrence, I believe, obtained a potion from Lucinda or Michi, I can't remember, it's been years, that would switch his place with Aaron when Afma would go to kiss him. Somehow, Garth and Lawrence ended up both getting swapped onto the stage and kissed each other. Now, this is what's weird. They both are interested in Afma, and they both express disgust when this incident occurs, but Jessica made sure to script a scene where Caitlin tells the cast of the play that the audience loved a Lawrence and Garth kiss. From then on, fans switched from the Garance bromance to a Garance romance, and Afma took note of this. Her videos gradually began to turn the two lovestick neighbors away from Afma to other girls and eventually teased the idea of the two being into each other. However, it never happened and instead Afma added a lesbian couple in season 2 of some random girls you really would only know from her much older series. I personally didn't even know who they were when I first saw them. But I digress. Afma showed that she clearly liked the idea of the boys' love storylines. She even joked about it in a blooper where Garth and Lawrence's characters got caught in a random weather change in the game and it began raining and Afma jokingly told them to show her some love between the two. The characters mostly just ran around the set piece, which made for a funny gag, but looking back it seems almost too coincidental. The kiss never seemed to leave the story though, as characters bring it up to tease the two boys, which they both would get upset about, and the fans were sh never sure the fate of the love lives of either of them. There was also a period where Zayn and Travis were being shipped by the fans. I personally have no idea where this came from or why it even became popular, but it brought some attention to Zayn's character as he had, at the time, had no clear love interest unless you count Aphmau, who admitted to having a crush on Zayn but it was somewhat unclear if he returned the feelings. Later, this turned into some weird dad-daughter thing between Zane and Afma, which again is just really weird to me since they were the same age and Zane was being creepily protective of Afma towards Aaron. But I guess that makes sense for why Kawaii-chan would become a huge role in this plot. By now, you should have noticed that Afma romanticizes shipping culture. She's one of those creators who made sure everyone in the main cast got with each other, leaving Garth and Lawrence out of the picture, which is another reason why everyone assumed they would become an item, and why there is a lot of talk about queer baiting regarding the two. However, Afmao took a simple character from her previous story, Minecraft Diaries, who was previously in that series married to Dante and even had kids with him. But in My Street, she goes through a few boys before settling on Zane, who is voiced by the same voice actor for Dante, so that's probably what caused that, mostly. Which was a cute idea in my opinion. The two were polar opposites, but they both enjoyed cute things and were best friends with Afma. Plus, they both loved and hated Aaron at the same time. Kawaii Chan is somewhat of a yandere, but not towards her own love interests, but towards her ships. She has multiple times where she is aggressive towards Lawrence, Garth, and Dante whenever they would get involved with Afma and Aaron. Casey's OTP. A lot of people say that Kawaii Chan's character is racist in multiple ways, however, I think this was intentional as Afmao is a really obsessed weeb, and there is plenty of evidence to back that claim. I think what happened is Afmao wanted a character that was cute and bubbly that fell into the stereotypical anime girl type, although it was executed extremely poorly. Even when Casey's character was more fleshed out, it felt very forced, especially since the majority of these one-dimensional characters just got the sad backstory trope. And it was revealed that her name was Nana, 
Again, very strange and muddy stuff, but I thought it was sweet that the whole real name thing gave her and Zane more connection with Zane knowing one of Casey's closest secrets. I personally really liked this relationship. There were times when the two characters acknowledged unhealthy issues and lack of boundaries between the two and it was quickly resolved. However, I don't remember much, so I could be thinking of this relationship with rose-tinted glasses. But besides that, Casey, or Nana, was the main reason behind the Yafma community having so many shipping wars. She presented shipping in such an uncomfortable and obsessive way that it was almost glorified and the fans didn't see what was wrong with the creepy, aggressive, stalker of a character that Afmo had created, of which appropriate a lot of Japanese culture and irresponsibly and incorrectly represented Japanese customs through the lens of anime. I personally don't know much on this topic, so I won't talk about it anymore moving forwards. Just take that into consideration and do your own research to formulate your own opinion. So we have queer baiting and shipping. Surely it can't get any worse, right? I mean, just the other day I found Afmo Roblox juice boxes in, in Walmart. But oh no friends, we are far from done. In regards to the shipping, I found that there was buzz about Jason, the voice of Aaron, Aphmau's love interest and Jessica's real life husband and father of many children, being uncomfortable and upset with Jessica giving Aphmau so many love interests that weren't Aaron. We saw this happen a lot with Garth, Lawrence, Travis, Dante, Zane, maybe Brendan, Jean, Ian, and so on and so on. But it became less funny for being a huge love diagram and more annoying and very uncomfortable when Phoenix Drop High released. This was a prequel series that released b before the next few seasons of My Street, and it brought back some of the old love triangles. But they didn't really go anywhere and it was somewhat pointless because at this point in the main story, Aphmau and Aaron were already together. However, this didn't last long because after Aphmau and Aaron came to be an item in high school, rather quickly, he moved to college and left underage Aphmau back home, and they both ended up picking up video games at some point, and they met each other online. I believe they didn't know it was each other, or maybe they did. The story gets extremely weird here, and I personally don't have the time to do that research. I am in college after all. But anyways, at this point, it was revealed that werewolves were a big deal and pretty much ran the whole high school. This is important because Aaron is a werewolf. Wow, this is some Twilight level stuff. So Aphmau, because of her relationship with the Alpha, Aaron, became the Alpha herself despite being human. This also brings up the whole fetish thing again because the male characters in the season get very close and uncomfortable for virtually no reason. Most notably was Ian, and his character marks the end of all good things coming from Aphmau. Ian is also a werewolf, and he is in love with Aphmau. Wow, shocker. Another male character made specifically for the love plot. This series was definitely inspired by Never Have I Ever on Netflix, or maybe it was the other way around, because Aphmau's been around longer. Who knows? But there's no way this many boys want this one very mediocre girl. But anyways, I believe they sort of dated, but they were for sure the alpha couple, as Ian put it. Which, this is so stupid, basically it was the werewolf hierarchy in the high school. They have this whole thing where the werewolves doing dog things, and that becomes very sexual at times and surely not appropriate for young audiences, but it happened and that's why this video exists now. One thing I remember in particular is Aaron licking Aphmau's cheek instead of kissing her. It was weird because she treated it like it was the hottest thing ever, but it really isn't. It's just weird. But regardless, Ian at some point just isn't relevant in the high school thing anymore and he doesn't show up until the next season of My Street where the gang splits and goes to a log cabin in the woods. This part of the series really lost me. We had some ridiculous plot with a ghost girl who sexualized Zane at his expense that ended up going into the body of this other girl. I think her name was Emma or something like that. I don't know. I never liked her and found her extremely annoying and boring, but that didn't stop her from being present and letting this ghost take over her body, which also meant non-consensual interactions between her physical body, the ghost in her mind, and Zane. Which, again, I think he was already dating Kawhi Chan at this time, so we have love that. Moving on from that kink, literally, we also see a resurgence of Ian, yay. So Ian is evil now and he has magic powers and he wants to take Aphmau for himself, which I can't understand why magic was allowed to exist in this series because it did not start that way and now we have ended up here in this weird tangled mess. So I think Ian wants to be alpha, 
more powerful and I guess romantically pleased? Basically, at some point, he takes control of Aphmau's mind. Also, main character syndrome, the worst and best things always happen to Aphmau. I get this is her story, but it gets redundant very fast. And when he does this, he makes her wear this very revealing outfit and turns her very sexual towards himself. Actually, she just became Jasmine from Aladdin when Jafar was in control. Same outfit and everything, just blue instead of red. Wow, so not only did Aphmau take plot points from Skyrim for MCD, but she also stole from popular media. Multiple times. Can I copy your homework? Yeah, just change it enough so it looks different. Boom, Aphmau. Anyways, Aaron gets uh, obviously very mad and upset about this and tries to fight Ian and take back Aphmau, but he ends up literally getting stabbed by Aphmau. And he dies. <laughs> the end. Just kidding. The Aphmau MCD gods give Aaron another chance and bring him back to life, and he manages to take out Ian. I believe they all thought Aaron killed Ian, but nope, Ian lived and returns. Uh, but that doesn't happen until a little later because there was a season called Aphmau's Year, and it's... it's a whole mess. Anyways, this is the point where the story got too insane and it just ended up being more serious than comedic like the first few seasons of My Street portrayed itself to be. Not to mention, with this seriousness also came very mature topics where Aphmau goes through a season of depression and anxiety following Aaron's death. And what happened with Ian, and there was a more extreme sexual tensions between characters that were treated like they were supposed to be funny or really beyond serious. After this whole mess, Aaron comes back, but so does Ian, and they have a big finale and boom, the series ended along with the entirety of Aphmau's quote-unquote best work. And now, we are entering the age of Aphmau Elsagate. Around 2019 and 2020, Aphmau dropped the mature themes following the birth of her most recent child and began focusing entirely on moving her content into kids' Minecraft content. At first, I watched one of these videos thinking it was a mini-game to follow up My Street or MCD, but no, it was just random things you would find on Linky Box? All the characters kept their base personalities and ended up just being background or small plot devices for the outrageous content farm Aphmau was created. This content started out harmless, but the fetishizing came back when not in the form of queer baiting, but in the form of werewolves, pregnancy, and shipping. We have seen before where Aphmau would do hide and seek mini games where the seeker would turn into a baby version of themselves, and therefore the actors would talk in high squeaky voices. We love that and try to find hiders, to which they would also turn into babies when they found them. This was virtually harmless until characters that were in relationships made it uncomfortable, specifically when Aphmau and Aaron played together and one would become a baby while the couple would simultaneously profess their romantic love for each other. So is this pedo content or more on the whole baby diaper fetish content? I have no idea. But with this new form of videos, Aphmau has at least three videos a week where characters are babies and in love with their adult love interest, and vice versa. Or Aphmau is pregnant with whatever species Aaron is this week. It's extremely weird, especially when you consider the amount of times Aaron gets turned into some sort of beast or monster that immediately turns this into kink and fetish content. But that isn't new when it comes to Elsa Gay content on YouTube. It's a shame to see how these videos used to come from thought-out storylines with scripts and voice actors and set designs to now being an over-glorified Minecraft linky box that capitalizes off established and beloved characters of the earlier generation of Aphmau fans. I fell for it when it started, and if you're watching this video, you probably did too. Another thing I'd like to mention that I actually didn't put in my script and while I was rereading it, I just thought of this. Um, recently, Aphmau's been putting up a lot of videos where Aphmau is dating other random character, and then in the thumbnail, she's, you know, moving in on a male character who looks reasonably uncomfortable while Aaron is in the background mad or sad. So I'm not sure what she's trying to say there, but um, if that means anything, it definitely plays into this, that's for sure. But um, anyways, back to the scripted part of the video. I don't understand why kids' content farms go for the pregnant video so often. It's very disturbing and really not something a child should have to think about or witness their favorite Aphmau roleplay Minecraft character go through. But alas, it happens. But before I move on, there was also talk about how Jason allegedly 
groomed Jessica because they did meet online when Jess was, I believe, a freshman in high school and Jason was a full adult in college, which they recreated in Phoenix Drop High, but there is no definite proof I could find about that, so please do not take my word as fact. That is just speculation from what I heard from other people in the community. And this is a little side note, but Aphmau also dabbled in the world of Roblox and uses a lot of VFX and mods to make her Minecraft gameplay as wacky as possible for Linky Box fans, which explains a lot of the crossover deals she has with different products you will see in stores, because I definitely did. Once again, this video was not made to shame Aphmau, her fanbase, or anyone. I simply wanted to talk about this topic because I used to live and breathe Aphmau content, and I still enjoy the original series. MCD inspired my own series I have been writing, so I have to give credit where credit is due. I also fell in love with the majority of the characters and personally was a big fan of Garth, Lawrence, and Zane when they came on screen. It is just really sad to see that what has happened to this content creator, how this channel rose to the point of being featured on an official Minecraft YouTube channel video as a cameo alongside many other Minecraft YouTubers, to what she's done to her channel now. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the video I just talked about, but I remember it vividly. The video was like that of YouTube Rewind, but for Minecraft YouTubers. Let me know if I left anything out. I think I missed something, but this video is already long as it is, so research for yourself and discuss what you will. I just ask that you don't harass Aphmau, and if you do, I will ban you from the channel, my channel, because I will find out and none of us want that. If you disagree with anything I've said, cool, don't get me involved. I'm just here to spread the news I know and share my art share my opinions, but if you agree, also cool. Moving on. I have seen some other channels go over Elsa Gate content where Aphmau is featured, specifically the Beak YouTube channel, which actually inspired me to make this video, so thank you. Um, so go to his channel and watch a video, watch all of his videos, and leave a comment, a comment, not multiple, just one, telling him how great his video is and that I sent you. Say, the Beak, you're awesome, great video, Dexterly sent me. Go message her because she's a big fan. You have to do both. You can't just do the one. Do not go on his channel and just be like, Dex really sent me. Don't do that. I'm so serious right now. Like, I'm actually beyond serious. Don't do that. We don't need to get banned from the platform. But leave a like for his videos. His videos are great. And this may or may not be a ploy to get him to message me. Which, by the way, my socials, as always, are linked in the description of this video and in my about page here on the channel. Don't forget to support my work by checking out my Etsy shop. Stickers are all $5 a piece, and you do get free shipping on any order that contains more than one item. So one sticker is $5 plus shipping, or if you buy two or more, free shipping and base price for your item. Um, so yeah, uh, go to my Patreon, uh, follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I actively update what's going on in the life of a college art YouTuber. Uh, be sure to like and share this video, subscribe for more content like this, and leave a comment about your thoughts. Negative comments will be ignored because I don't have time for that. And tell me what you thought about my drawing there as well. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching this video to the end. Thank you all for 1,000 three subscribers. This channel is growing so much and it couldn't have happened without you. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Before this video ends, I would like to remind you all about the 1k subs giveaway commission. Again, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram, and message me via Instagram saying dexterly1000 subs for your Instagram handle to be entered into the raffle. Again, I will not draw furries for Sona's explicit content including NSFW and Mecca's. The character will have a solid color background, be full body, and have flat colors in my basic line art. Be sure to join before the end of the week entries are over.